Good morning, everyone. It's kind of a dark morning this morning. It's a bunch of storm clouds on the horizon, but we are here and we are going to have a good day today. So, um, hope that you guys are. Oh, I think there was lightning off to my left, too. Um, hope that you guys are having a good morning this morning. We're going to continue talking about the idea of healthy friendships, one of our seven checkpoints. And we're going to be looking at, um, uh, specifically today, um, we're going to be looking at continuing our discussion on 1 Samuel 18, looking at the story of Jonathan and David um, and their best friendship and why their friendship was um, something that we can model ourselves after. So the last few days we've been talking about specifically in the first part of 1 Samuel 18 where Jonathan is giving David different items and what is the symbolism behind each one of those items. Um, and so we talked already about his outer robe, and then he gives him his tunic, and these, the next thing that he ends up giving him is his uh, bow and his sword. And so I'm going to talk about both of those today, um, because the concept is, like, as a friend, you got to think about it. Like, what, what, this, what does a sword and a bow do? What is their purpose? Well, it's to um, hurt somebody, right? I mean, that's the, the basic line. Like, you don't... you. <laughs> You don't use a sword for like firewood. You don't use a sword to like cut down trees. You have axes and stuff for that. Um, a sword's specific and intended purpose is to hurt another person. Uh, same thing with a bow. Now bows can be used to um, take down animals, of course, but you know, in, in this setting in the day, they were using a bow specifically for battle. And so he gives, Jonathan gives David his bow and his sword. And what is the symbolism behind that? And if you think about it, the fact that they hurt, uh, Jonathan has actually given David the tools to hurt himself. And so as we're following kind of the progression of friendship, and as you get closer into your own friendships, excuse me, he um, first off takes his outer robe, which shows that you need to be comfortable around your friends. Um, that they are somebody who's trustworthy enough that you can just, you know, get comfortable around them, kind of relax for a little bit in their presence and not feel like you have to be putting on a show or be on edge. Then he gives you the tunic and the tunic was all about um, being vulnerable with them and letting them see the true you and then having you as the friend accepting that person for who they are, um, flaws and all, just as they are. And then, so then giving them your symbolic uh, bow and sword basically says that um, you are giving your friend something that can hurt you. And what does that look like? Well, you give them something that uh, is, a, is a secret of yours. You're giving them something that is true, trustworthy, and that's how you start forming the true bonds and true intimacy is by sharing those things that are very personal to you. Things that if it got out would hurt you. Um, you know, maybe it's a and something that you're ashamed of. Um, maybe it's something that you know other people just wouldn't understand. Whatever it might be in our world today, it's it's something that would hurt you. Um, and the fact is that once you get to this level with somebody who you trust as a friend, um, you can open up to them about these kind of things and give them something that they uh, give them something that like to them, so you can share that burden with somebody else. Uh, and the thing is, like, the bonds that you get then from friendship, from sharing something that's that personal, um, and, and trusting that the other person is going to not take that and stab you with it, um, is a huge deal. And also, you as a friend, when your friend comes to you with something that's insanely personal, that you, uh, big semi-truck. Okay, this is like the fourth time this week that I've had, like, a massive semi-truck just, like come right up on me. Um, but anyway, the, the idea that like you as the friend, if you are the one who has received the symbolic bow and the sword, that you are going to be responsible with it, that you're not just going to turn around and stab your friend with it. And let's be honest, there have been many of us who have gotten to that level of friendship where we've shared something personal and, the, and that person has turned around and stabbed us in the back, literally. And that's where kind of that phrase comes from is um, not specifically from the Bible, but the idea that you've given your friend a knife uh, to help defend you with and they have turned around and stabbed you in the back rather than um, helping defend you. And so the, we've been stabbed so many times that maybe we, we struggle with that trust again. Um, maybe we, okay, or maybe the opposite is true. Maybe we've become too trusting and we just give out that information too readily uh, and we're not, you know, that information about us and then we, you know, 
know, get hurt because it's like, oh, the person betrayed my trust. Well, it's because we gave it out too, too readily. And so the question now becomes, how do we know when to do that? And honestly, I think it's, there is no, there is no clean cut answer. Um, my, one of my indicators for myself, and I'm not saying this is a hard and fast rule, but this is just how I've gone on to live my life, um, is whenever that person is willing to, like, once they start sharing a little bit with me, and it starts kind of small, you know what I mean? Um, once they're starting to share information with me, then, um, I will be more willing to share information with them and start out small, start off with something that's not that big of a deal and see how your friend does with it. I don't mean to like test your friends like, oh, you know, I have to make sure that he's a good friend, so I'm going to give him this information. It's like, no, it's not that. It's just, you know, give them a little bit of something to kind of protect yourself to create a healthy boundary and make sure that they are somebody who will, um, who can keep that information should you need to. Um, and then you can trust them with bigger things. One of the biggest, the best indicators of um, a healthy friendship is past behavior, you know what I mean? If they've, tr if you trusted them with information in the past, then they can definitely trust them with more valuable information in the future. And so, anyway, kind of a simple uh, concept today, but uh, your challenge today is to really think about um, your own personal sword and bow. Uh, think about where your deep, um, I guess, secrets if you would lie try to identify those so what does it really hurt you and have you shared that with someone and have you had an experience in which somebody has betrayed that trust or maybe you've been the one to betray that trust if you've betrayed it then I want you to go apologize today to that person even if it, that friendship is done that person still needs to hear it just like you need to hear it today uh, I mean if somebody else betrayed your trust you would want to hear that from them as well you would want to hear that they are uh, sorry for, for what has happened um, even if you're not necessarily friends with them, it just gives you some kind of closure. So if you've hurt somebody, go apologize today. If you um, if you have not, for you know, if you have not reached that point, um, that's fine. But think about today. If you're struggling with trust, look down today as to why why are you really struggling with trust? What what's been going on? Kind of analyze yourself um, and see what's going on in, in that area specifically. So it's kind of your challenge today is to think about those things much deeper and really try to go deeper. If you have a friend that you've reached that point with where you can trust them, discuss this with them openly. Um, this is the point where you can actually have the rubber hit the road, go find that friend um, that you can sit down and you can talk to and discuss these things. And, you know, maybe make it make an unofficial pact, if you will. You know, you've seen a lot of movies where they do all like friendship pacts, you know, we're blood brothers or whatever. It's not, I'm not saying something like that, but I'm saying like, just make a, make like a commitment with your friends that you will, um, that, you, that you guys will hold each other's trust, you know? Um, however that looks to you, make it personal to you. So anyway, that's your challenge today. Let's pray and I'll send you guys on your way. God, I just thank you for today. Um, I always say that every day, but I do thank you for today. Thank you for every single day that we have. Um, we're not guaranteed another day in this world. Uh, we're not guaranteed that we're going to live to be a certain age. And so, God, I pray we don't take for granted the days that you've given us and the blessings that you've given us for each one of that day, um, each one of that day, each one of those days. Um, God, that we will <clears throat> be willing to open our eyes and look around for things that are positive. I know for myself, I've struggled in the past with trustworthiness and um, just being able to open up to people. And thank you for opening my eyes and helping me see uh, past my own insecurities and past my own flaws. Um, and that you've given, you've blessed me with friends that um, have my back and are willing to support me and, and not um, stab me in the back, really. So God, we love you today. We want to worship you. I thank you for this beautiful sunrise this morning, even through the storms. Um, I just pray that uh, everyone will have just a wonderful, blessed day, um, that you will just be lifted up in all we do. I pray these things in your name. Amen. Love you guys. Have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow.